Y'all ready for the word? Amen. Now, is you sure you're ready for the word? Because I just sense in my heart, I, 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 I've been wrong before, but I sense in my heart that we get ready to get spanked. So it's going to be a spanking for some of us. Amen. It's going to be a blessing for others. Amen. We got a man preaching this morning that's capable. He's a preacher and he's a prophet.
between us and God. Where there is willful sin, there is no more sacrifice. Come on, Every on. time we willfully sin, we're the ones with the hammer putting the nail in his hand and in his feet. But sometimes we look at the centurions, the soldiers, and we want to condemn them for what they did to Christ, but then we turn around and do you Do you beat yourself up that, that bad as much as you beat them up? After you get through basic and AIT, this is your school training. Your school is to equip you with knowledge and understanding of the job that you chose. That job equivalates to the call on our life. Amen. So we have to come to the building, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves, yeah. so we can be taught something. Yeah. How to fulfill the call that's on our life. My topic this morning is I am preparing you for battle. I've been hearing this word battle. He's confirmed it so many times this week. Like it was innumerable. I stopped counting. Because of his confirmation. Wednesday night was confirmation. And then yesterday for the men's meeting was more confirmation. I kept looking at Apostle to try to stay out of my mess spit. But <laughs> he kept talking about King David. <laughs> um, I want y'all to, to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Joshua chapter 7, 1 through 5. As you're getting there, I'm praying. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask and pray this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask and pray, O oh God, that you hide me behind the cross, O oh God. Keep me at the foot, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, where I'm equal with everyone else, O oh God, that they would see and hear you and not me. Father, my opinion don't matter. What I think don't matter. How I feel don't matter. But God, what is Holy Spirit saying to the church today? Father, I pray, Lord, that as I decrease, God, that you increase in me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, let your word come forth, that it bear fruit, that shall remain, O oh God. Make us, O oh God, as the cedars of Lebanon, yes. in the name of Jesus, standing strong on your word, O oh God, not breaking and not being destroyed. Even though we're perplexed on every side, oh God. Father, you said that those that are in your hand cannot be plucked out. Father, help us to make sure that we're in your hand. We give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. And God, I thank you that this is not no feel good message. That as though it's good for them, it is also good for me. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that your convictions fall heavy on this ministry. That we would get out of the way, O oh God, and humble ourselves under the hand of God Almighty. We pray that your will be done in this hour. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the word. <laughs> now, I see y'all wanting to sit down. <laughs> y'all just showing me what y'all do at home. Y'all reverence God at home. Turn with me to chapter 7 of Joshua, and verse 1, I'm reading. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. Talking about the fall of Jericho. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaba, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them before the gate, even unto Shabiram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Skip down to verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? 
Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they even take of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. You may be seated. To give you a little bit of background, Numbers 13 says, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. God, it was not God's plan, but God allowed it for them to send spies into the land of Canaan. When they got there, they were there for 40 days searching out the land. What God had told them was true. It'd be a land that floweth with milk and honey. If we look at that in our society today, and we know that we have asked God for certain things, and God has promised them to us, do we take him at his word? Come on. Fully. Because they took part of his word. They took the milk and honey part. But when they saw the giants, they said, we be as grasshoppers in their sight. So right then, they belittled themselves. The land of the giants did not have Jehovah. They didn't have his shadow. They didn't have his defense. That's what shadow means. When we are up under the umbrella of God, we're protected. And we have victory. But when we allow willful sin into our lives, we lose that cover. We lose that defense. As long as we're under the shadow of God Almighty, the enemy can't just touch us when he wants to. He can't just do in our life as he pleases. So how do we make sure that we stay up under the defense of God? <clears throat> we know that God had allowed Egypt, uh, the children of Israel to be in Egypt in bondage for 430 years. Two main reasons for this was first to allow the Amorites plenty of time to repent, which shows God's long suffering towards mankind. The Amorites were going to be a people that the children of Israel had to destroy to get into the promised land. We're always taught that when God promises us something, that it comes with an A and B portion. We don't get that promise without having to do something. But what we do is we cry. Just as Joshua would lay on his face and was crying because he couldn't understand why this small city of Ai overtook Israel. It was their second defeat. The first defeat that they had was when they defeated themselves, oh my God. which was over here in the land of Canaan. Because Moses, it was Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. It says that, uh, let, me, let me get there so I can read it. This is Numbers 13, verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. That's taking God at his word. Yeah. Does God not require us to walk by faith and yeah. not by sight? Right. But out of the 12, only two had a good report. Yeah. The 10 had a negative report. That's right. It says, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. So they're walking by sight. Joshua and Caleb walking by faith. Yeah, Does not the scripture tell us that without faith it's impossible to please God? Yeah. Why do we like to take part of God's word and not other? Right. I'm sick of hearing about God's love, mercy, and grace. Mm -hmm. That don't do nothing for me if I'm in sin. Oh All that does is help me pet my sin and keep it around longer. Come on. Yeah. What happened to the judgment of God? Mm -hmm. What happened to the wrath of God? Right. We don't like that part. We right. want to skip those scriptures. Say. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw within are men of a great stature. Again, moved by what they see. Can we really say that we're trusting God in this hour? Can we really say, because Jesus said, if any man follow me, that was for back then, and that's for now. He must first deny himself. Amen. Take an uh, inventory of your life and find out what you're not denying. Mm -hmm. 
Because most of us in here and online, we're feeding something that we shouldn't be feeding. Come on, sir. That's why it's still alive. Good. Over in Numbers 14, verse 8, he says, If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear. So that right there was two conditions. It says, The people of the land, for they are bread for us. Joshua and Caleb was talking and was saying that God's going to give us this land, and just like God provided manna for us in the wilderness, these people are food to us. We can't overtake them. Right. We can inherit this land. Good. So as to not read all of this, which it says their defense is departed from them, what he was saying was God is on our side, not theirs. Amen. We have God's defense and protection. Right. They don't. That's how we know we can win. Amen. That's how we know we got victory. Because we have faith in our God. Amen. Amen. Ask yourself, what God are you trusting in? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of gods. Not real ones. They're false. They don't really exist. But we make them God. What are you spending most of your week doing and pondering on? Is it the word of God? Oh my God. I ain't even got that in my introduction. Um, is it the word of God or is it what we think? Is it what our flesh wants? Is it our opinions? Is it our emotions? Some of us were moved by our emotions. We don't know how to manage our emotions. We let our emotions be in control and chase the desires of our heart. And that's where we're missing God. That's the blockage. After they said this, it says that all the congregation, you're talking about around 2 million people, it says they stoned them with stones. They wanted to kill the leaders because they didn't agree with their report. How often do we really pray for the shepherds of the churches? Oh my God. When they tell us something we don't want to hear, well, when they point out our sins, Amen. the first thing we do is get upset with them and we want to kill them. Come on. It might not be physically, but you might kill them with your lips. That's it's right. what you're saying. Oh my God. It's your disobedience. It's your rebellion. We have, As leaders, we have to shoulder that. We, can, we know we can't come to you about it because you're going to look at us this right. Amen. We can't be human beings up here. Y'all look at us as though we're supposed to be perfect just because God gave us a word or because we have a call on our life. I didn't ask for the call. He gave it to me. And he said, you're either going to do it or you're not. So it's a choice. He don't force me to do anything, but he do allow situations to show up that bring me right back to him. How many times have we looked at the stories of the children of Israel? Do you know when they were in the wilderness for 40 years, God did around 2,530 miracles for them? Wow. And they still murmured and complained. They still could not trust God. How many of us have prayed and God moved for us, and then a week or two later, we're right back to complaining about something else? Help us up in here. Well, God, you didn't do this. I'm still waiting on this. You know why? Because it's all about trying to satisfy your flesh. That's why I said the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Our flesh is constantly always on fire for something other than God. It wants everything else, but not God. A lot of people saying, well, you say God, you say God speaks to you. I'm okay, yeah. Well, he don't speak to me. But every time you open up his word, He's speaking Amen. about something. Are you listening? That's the problem. Amen. How much of us do so much talking and never hear from God? Because we don't shut up long enough to hear him. Yeah. <laughs> we pray, and then after, as soon as we get done praying, we start looking for results. Yeah. We start looking for the answer to the prayer we just prayed. Amen. Instead of just going on and allowing God to be God. Come on. He don't move on our time frame. Well, He's Kronos. He's the father of time. He's not in our time. He moved when he wants to move, how he wants to move, because he's sovereign. Amen. How often do you hear the sovereignty of God taught? He can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. No one can take up a case against God. Who's going to listen? When we, we, get, we truly find ourselves getting upset with God. Amen. What are you going to do about it if he don't answer your prayer? 
get mad and cry and think he's going to move? Just in the natural, when our kids throw a tantrum, are we supposed to just give in to what they want? But that's what a lot of parents nowadays are doing. They're trying to be the child's friend and not the parent. Well, say that. Israel was to defeat the Amorites once their iniquity had become full. Amen. Per nation, God will have a cup set in front of him. And it starts filling up with sin. Mm. When it starts overflowing, like this cup right here, it starts overflowing. Where do you think the wrath of God goes? Mm. What do we think appeases him at that time? Mm. There's an answer. Yeah. But the thing is, why do we let it get so full? Wow. If you really go back and study uh, the failure at AI, you will see that there was sin in the camp. God had told them when they overtook Jericho on the 13th time, they had to make a sound and the walls fell. Could you imagine shouting at an actual wall around a defense city would just fall in front of you because you're being obedient to God? Oh, uh, yeah. What about these walls that we put up with people? Are we shouting at them and giving God praise for them to fall? Or are we steady stacking bricks to make it stronger? A lot of us are really hurting our own self. Our worst enemy is us. The inner me is my enemy. How much time do you spend each week, every day, denying that inner me? what it's yelling and screaming for. I'm tired of people talking about I'm fasting because they ain't watching TV or something. But they eating everything in sight. <laughs> You're feeding your flesh. Your God is your belly. Whatever it wants, that's what you give it. That's not denying yourself. Denying yourself, it hurts. It costs something. If you really look at your walk with God, if it ain't costing you, you're serving the wrong God. Amen. Because it is not the God of the Bible. This man, Achan, after they defeated Jericho, decided he wanted some of the gold that was there, a gold bar and some clothes. It come up to about 600 and some odd dollars. That, that little bit of money to us, 600 and some dollars, it not only cost Israel 36 of the 3,000 men. 36 men died that day. Joshua goes and lays before God, why didn't we defeat this small town? Like, we should have overtook them easily. We didn't even have to send all our soldiers. God tells him to get up off your face. What do you think happens when there's sin in the congregation? Because we're talking about the children of Israel, but they were also called the congregation. That's right. What are y'all? The congregation. Amen. Come on, sir. If something ain't flowing in this ministry, uh -huh. It's because they're sin. Right. If we are not being added to daily, it's because of sin. Yeah. If promises ain't being fulfilled, prophecies ain't coming to pass, don't blame the leaders. It's probably something in your life. It's probably some willful sin that you're feeding. That's why it's not coming to pass. But the first thing we do, we want to pick up stones and throw it at the leaders. It's y'all's fault it ain't working. We don't never want to blame us. And we never want to be told no. But that's what God is doing right now. God is getting tired of sending manifest, manifested blessings to his people. Jesus. And they're spiritually lacking. Oh my God, help us out. Again, the title is, I am preparing you for battle. Thank you, Jesus. Once the Amorites couple of sin at the end of 430 years, so we have to go through bondage sometimes because we're waiting on God right. because there's a nation he wants us to either help or to defeat. And if they, their sin overflows that cup, we're not to help them. He wants us to defeat them. Some God allowed them to defeat and they could take up the spoils because they didn't get paid being sold. Amen. But when he sent them to Jericho, Jericho was cursed. He told them, do not take anything from there. Burn everything up. Because they are wicked in the sight of God. Amen. This guy, it cost 36 men. It cost him his life, his, his spouse, his wife, 
and their kids. All of them died. They got stoned to death. All over 600 and some died. So don't tell me that a little sin, God's going to continue to overlook. Because in our eyes, that's small. Yeah. That's minor. Yeah. That ain't no major deal. So far, I took a little bit of stuff. I stole a little bit. I only stole some candy. Mm-hmm. I only stole some bread. Yeah. You're breaking the commandment of God. An express commandment. We only want to follow the 10, but there's over 600 commandments. <laughs> this is why we can't keep the commandments. But that is not a license to sin. Amen. The second reason was for Israel to increase and become a mighty nation. According to Genesis 15, 13 through 16, and Exodus 1 and 7. Israel was God's chosen nation, and he was setting them up for victory, even though they could not see it. God wanted to set them up to be a nation that was looked up to by the other nations, the heathen nations who served other gods. Why do you think God calls us a peculiar people, a royal priesthood? Why is that? People should get around us and feel honor flowing from us. Not because of something we're doing except living right and being obedient. That's just our reasonable service. He says, be holy for I am holy. If we say we are serving the God of the Bible, Come on. the same God that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob served, yes, sir. then the way they live, uh-huh. we have to live. Come on, man. But a lot of people want to preach and teach out of the New Testament Amen. and not talk about the Old Testament. Amen. Because the Old Testament, it'll, it'll cause some conviction. Yes, yes, this word convicted me. Amen. So I know it's going to convict some of y'all. Yeah. But if you don't want to be convicted, nah. then leave. Come on. Because you're not a part of the kingdom anyway. Yeah. You're just taking up space. You're wasting gas to get here, but you don't want to hear what God has to say. You want us to stand up here as prophets and men of God, lay hands on you, and tell you that you're going to get a house or a car. But you don't want us to tell you, look, you need to stop committing adultery and fornication and lying and be holy. Come on. Because we want what we want, how we want it, and when we want it. For the last time I checked, there's no human being that's sovereign. Only God. Sovereignty only belongs to him. Right. Israel was to be an example of how serving the true and living God brought blessings and honor. Israel had never lost a battle as long as they trusted in God. That's right. Their first defeat was in the land of Canaan because after they brought back the evil report, God told Moses and them, I'm going to kill them. And he said, Moses, he went on their behalf. He said, Lord, don't do that. Because the heathen nations around, they're going to look at you and be like, well, we thought God was going to bring y'all into this promised land. We thought God was going to bless y'all and do this and do that. And y'all, y'all dying. Oh my God. You know what they did after they decided that they want to stone them? They decided, you know what, God, we sinned against you. You know what, God, we didn't do what you told us to do. We're sorry. You know what the Bible said that was? Their first false repentance. Wow. After they did that. They decided, you know what, God, we'll trust you when we'll go into the promised land. But God was not with them. When they went into the promised land to fight against the giants, they were defeated. That was their first defeat. And it was because of false repentance and rebellion. Moses did not go with them to that battle. The Ark of the Covenant did not go with them to that battle. And every time they went to war, the leader was supposed to be with them and the Ark of the Covenant. Because that symbolized the presence of God. There was a cloud that hovered over the children of Israel as long as they were doing what God expected them to do. Just be obedient. They came back crying, trying to figure out why they lost. It's because of your heart, your motive. This ain't just called, I'm preparing you for battle. God told me, as a subtopic, if you will, it could be called the battle of the minds or the battle of wills. How many of us know that there's more than one will in the earth? Amen. The devil has a will for your life, and you got a will for your life. Yeah. Which one of you follow? Because God's will lines up with his word all the time. His standard never changes. Never. God gave me this topic last Sunday. I had no idea what was going to be taught Wednesday night, and I had no idea what was going to be taught yesterday. And he basically has already said everything that's in here. This is just confirmation. 
I know a lot of y'all have been waiting and expecting me to get up here and preach. I don't know if y'all thought I was going to be softer than Apostle McNeil, but most of my messages is judgment. I'm to follow the lifestyles of the major prophets. They did not go around prophesying blessings. If you go back and study the prophets, every time they came to a city yes, gate, sir. they would stop them outside yes, the gate and say, do you come in peace or are you bringing a message of destruction? <laughs> so I am here to tear down, root up and pull down and cast down the works of the devil. Amen. We're not here to play with no sin. Amen. Israel had, like I said, had never lost a battle. If you look at Exodus 1, chapter 1, verse 11 through 12, we may not like affliction, but it proves that we become stronger, multiply, and increase under affliction, during suffering. If you really look at the earth, the earth realm, especially America, when we got a lot of problems going on, especially a national crisis, everybody wants to church. But as soon as that dies down, everybody goes back in. But they still want God to move. I'm so sick of people wondering why there's so many murders, why kids are shooting up schools, why people are going in churches and shooting, because there is no real reverence of God. The fear of God is not to be afraid of him. It's to reverence his name. That means a deep respect of him. That means a deep honor of him. Father, I don't want to, but I'm going to honor you on this day. Yeah. We're supposed to do that every day. Amen. You know what that does? It crucifies your flesh. That's right. Instead of us putting the nails in our hands, we go back and we crucify him all the way. Right. Every time we willfully sin, we crucify him again. But we'll come in here on Sunday, cry, because we're thinking about him hanging on the cross for us, and he's trying to tell us, you have to do the same for your brothers and your sisters. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man that will lay down his life for his friends. Are we, aren't we supposed to be friends Amen. in the body of Christ? Even King David spoke about how he was glad that he was afflicted because prior to his affliction, he strayed from God. But after he was afflicted, he came back to the word of God. This is Psalms 119, 67 and 71. Persecution and affliction, in other ways, has always caused the church to grow. It pushes us to learn God's statutes, and we find ways to be stronger, to overcome that darkness in our life, that dark period. Because as soon as that dark period of our life passes, we go right back to doing what we wanted to. We forget God all over again. This met, uh, I already said that. Can we safely say that there is more than one will in the earth? We are going to go deeper on this topic so we can understand what God is saying in this hour. I'm going to break down this topic for you. We're going to begin first with I am. Who is I am? Moses asked God in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, who would he say to Israel, sent him there to be their deliverer? God said, tell them, I am that I am, sent you. God has many names. If you go back and study, there's about 16 different names of Jehovah. It says, when you find yourself questioning yourself due to an inadequacy, a weakness of yours, a dark period in your life. Some of us didn't grow up with our fathers, so we need God to show us what a father is. Right. Some of us don't have many friends, so we lean on God to be our friend. Amen. He might need to be our healer, our provider, yeah. our strong tower, our refuge. That is who he is. He is. He says, I am what you need me to be. But there's a condition. You got to be obedient. You got to be living a life that's sacrificial. The reason Christ did away with the animals being sacrificed is because he was the ultimate sacrifice, which gave us the example of what we need to be. But the body of Christ is full of diseases. Think about this. When you're sick, maybe a virus or bacteria in your body, what do you do? You take something to get rid of it. God is sending a remedy to the body of Christ to get rid of some of us. Because we are that virus in the body of Christ. 
Come on. We are that bacteria. We're what's causing the body of Christ to not be unified in the faith. Christ will return when the body of Christ has been made perfect without spot, wrinkle, or blemish and is doing what God sent it to do. We should all have the same agenda. Yes, sir. But almost every church you ride by is doing something different. It don't mean God told them to do God does not preside in every church. Amen. Right. Amen. How, how many churches do you know nowadays that's genuinely preaching and teaching the unadulterated word of God? Uh, if every time you listen to a preacher or a teacher and it's constantly about prosperity, mm -hmm. you might as well stop. Because he ain't talking about that. Mm -hmm. Nothing that's going to keep you. In my God. If we, how many, raise your hand. How many of y'all think it's intense right now in the spirit realm? Y'all think it's intense? Yeah. No. You remember the three Hebrew boys? He, he threw them in the fire. He saw the Son of Man with them. They weren't burned. They didn't smell like smoke or nothing. But he told them, turn it up seven times greater. So if you think it's intense now, and you're struggling now, keep living. Because it's going to get hotter. Oh, yeah. You know, the Lord showed me, he was like, so many of my people were claiming how bad things really are right now. He said, they, he said they, they can't see. They got scales on their eyes, and their ears are dull of hearing. I don't even watch the news, and I can see how bad it is. <laughs> but I also see further down the road. Yes. This, is, this also ties into a husband. He is the eyes and vision for his family. He's supposed to see a threat miles away Amen. before his family. His family is supposed to be behind him right. so he can protect what's ahead. Yeah. But do you know how many men right now can't see? Well, they cannot see. They can't see no more than from day to day. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, Paul talks about this. He learned to take God at his word, even if it was not the answer he hoped for. God told him that his grace was sufficient, and in that, Paul learned something else. How to take glory in his own weaknesses and distresses. One of our issues, major issues, we don't know how to suffer. But we expect this walk to not require suffering. You must be in relationship with God in order to ask him of this. Maybe you need to experience him as a provider or a father. My point is this. Right now, God is speaking to us as our trainer or developer. Amen. He's our drill sergeant. So right now, we're going through basic training and AIT training to learn what it is God called us to do and how to be effective at it. The only thing stronger than the word of God is the tradition of men. It makes God's word of no effect. Because we stuck on what we see and what we hear and what our past people have done, our forefathers have done. Right. How many times did God tell the men of God to not follow their family heritage? He told Abraham, start, start walking. Get away from your, your father and him, your family. They, they worship the sun, the stars, the moon. And he all he did was pack up his stuff and started walking. Amen. God didn't even tell him where to go. He said, when you get there, I'll tell you. Amen. That's faith. I'm walking, and I'm not looking to the left or right. I'm going to keep walking until I hear God say something. Amen. If God don't give you an answer on your prayer, the best thing you should do is nothing. Keep waiting. Amen. But we don't like to wait Amen. because it feels like a burden. Anything that feels like a burden to us, we try to run from. But some things are a good burden. Mm -hmm. It's a good weight. Mm -hmm. But we have to have the right attitude. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, says that we should endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In basic training, if you was a complainer and a murmurer, they would send you back for recycling. That means it took you longer to finish your basic AIT. Some of us, that's what we've done. We've caused our promises to be delayed. And then we want to be mad with God. You know why? Because of your attitude. Because of the ungratefulness in your heart yeah. for what he's already done. Oh, yeah. He sent his only son to spill his precious blood for us. That's not enough. We want more. 
we need more. Some of us have it better than a lot of people in the world. It could be worse. Jesus. Right. I have to remind myself of this. When it comes time for us to endure hardness as a good soldier, do we go through it with the right attitude? Are we even aware or able to discern if it is something sent from God or Satan? Or maybe it's something that we cause. Jesus. If we find ourselves not going through the proper way, maybe we need to seek God as our strong tower. Uh -huh. Maybe you've been going through physically and never needed God in that area before. Now is an opportunity for you to experience the great I am as your healer and physician. Amen. Whatever you're lacking in life, ask God to be that. That's why he says I am that I am. I am what you need me to be, but you've got to first belong to me. <laughs> And some of us don't belong to him. Oh and we say we're praying and crying out to God. Well, what God are you crying out to? Because the Bible makes it very clear that God is very specific. Yes. Everything he does has purpose. Amen. Even when they built the tabernacle of Moses, they had to use certain colors. They had to use certain materials. Yes. Certain type of jewels. It, everything had a purpose. But we come in the body of Christ. And we just bring whatever we want into it. And say God's going to honor. Wow. He does not. He does not. Even if we come in and we're trying to pray to Him, but we're also following other false gods, we're offering up strange fire. God don't honor that. If He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, that means what He done to people back then, He'll still do it. People fell dead in the church. Yeah. You saw Achan's little sin, how we would call it. Six hundred and some dollars, how it caused people's lives. Amen. One of the reasons God says I'm preparing you for battle is because when we commit a sin, a willful sin, and we think we're doing it in private, we never think about the consequences of how it affects others around us. Amen. We think our sins only affect us. No. This right here is proof that it does not. Right. What does, what does God mean by prepare? How does that fit into God's plans for our lives in today's world? God wants us to receive this message in two aspects. One is on a personal level, and the other one as the body of Christ as a whole. So you have to have a personal relationship with God, but you've got to always remind yourself of being in the body of Christ. So you're a part of something bigger. So everything you do, it flows through the body. When I get a virus in my stomach, it might affect my head, my feet. We're the same way, but we don't look at it that way. That's right. He is preparing us right now on how to deal with our personal battles. And once we find ourselves in position, established, and strengthened, then we are able to go out and duplicate disciples of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. That's the first thing he mentions. It's suffering. If every time you start suffering, you start complaining, you're going to have to recycle and go back to it. You will never reach your promised land. Why, why couldn't Moses go into the promised land? Disobedience. God told him to speak to the rock, for water to come out for the people, and he hit it twice out of frustration. Don't tell me frustration <laughs> has to become anger before you sin. Amen. I don't think we realize how disobedient we really are sometimes. Come on. Right. We rebel against everything that makes us feel like we got to carry a burden or cause something. On, we turn the other way. That's the wrong attitude. Right. Until you go through, they had to go through the Jordan come on. to get to the promised land. Until you go through it, you're not going to reach it. So you might as well stop asking God to honor his part because you're not doing your part. After you have suffered a while, he will make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and then settle you. Some of us, we're not settled. We are running to and fro. We're being tossed to and fro. We're double-minded. We're unstable in all our ways. But we try to dress up the outside right. so people will think that we're set and that we have confidence and we have a high self-esteem. And internally, we struggle. Oh, we're struggling with private sins, 
private failures yes. and they come and try to do something for the body of Christ. Come on. My God. If we are unable to endure our inflictions with the right attitude and trust in God, how are we then able to help another? To prepare means to develop, produce, construct, and make ready for use. Make ready for use for what? According to 2 Timothy 2 and 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these things, and it's talking about the works of the flesh, it don't say if God purged that man. It says if a man purged himself of these. Everything we're asking God to deliver us from is not his job. Some of it is ours. We got to deliver ourselves from it by stop going around. Stop entertaining. Stop feeding. And we wonder why we're still dealing with it. And we look to God. And he's looking right back at you with his arms full. That's right. That's your job. Some things he gives us the power to have dominion over. But we're not operating in our authority and dominion as we should. But yet, we're trying to have dominion over somebody else. And tell them to fix what they got going on. But you don't want to face yourself. Your worst enemy is you. A lot of things, I'm talking about the majority of it, is us. We might, some of us might actually be waiting on God for something. But honestly, most of our issues is us. We're facing the consequences of our choices and decisions. Yeah. Or we're expecting God to do something that he's expecting us to do. Oh my God. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. We're chasing honor before we purge ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want the honor. We want the glory. We want the fame. We want the power. Wow. But we don't want to go through together. We don't want to purge ourselves of certain things. Amen. But God is telling us, if you keep holding on to these things, you will never get to that place. Amen. Have you ever seen the, the what's it called? Like where that the monkey is trying to get something out of a jar. As long as he's got his fist closed, he can't get out. Yes. He gotta let go of what he wants. All right. Same thing applies in the kingdom. Amen. If you want X, Y, and Z from God, then you need to let A, B, and C go. Amen. Until you do that, you won't get it. Amen. And you're just gonna cause yourself more depression and anxiety, more frustration and anger. And it's just going to add to what you're already dealing with. Don't make your walk harder than it already has the most. Sanctify and meet for the master's use and prepare unto every good work. This is what it means to be prepared by God. The Bible says we should be instant in season and out of season. Are we really truly prepared to do what God has called us to do? How many of you right now, honestly, could get up and do what God called you to do? Amen. Be anointed in it, be obedient in it, and maintain a holy lifestyle. Come on, wow. Wow. Sometimes Holy Spirit causes us to be silent in some season. Do you know when it's time to shut up? <laughs> and this is just, this is how God told me to make it plain. He says, make it plain, write it upon tables, the vision, so that when people hear it, they can run with it. They're not questioning. I don't have no eloquent speech. I don't have no enticing words. I only want to say what the Lord wants me to say. Sometimes in certain seasons, God wants us to be quiet. There's a time and season, according, according to Ecclesiastes, there's a time and season for everything. We want to skip over the seasons we don't like and go right into another blessed season. My God, come on. And it's not, we're not, we're not built that way. That's come right. On. We sometimes spend way too much time talking and not listening for God's voice in our life. He still speaks in a small, still voice. I have learned over the years that God even uses our five senses to show us things. But we try to keep such a full schedule that we are missing them. Why do you think we have five senses? It is the small, subtle things around us that brings some of the most profound revelations. If I would have never went into the military, I would have never been able to talk about basic training. But because I went through it, God uses that to express something spiritual. Take your mind off of the carnal things. The carnal things are temporary. The things unseen are forever. He uses things that he knows can get our attention. 
but we must be prepared at all times with the full armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, because Satan can do the same thing. Amen. Do you know what the word sensual means? Sensual is not just related to sexual. Amen. We need to stop thinking like that. Sensual can be in your tone. Sensual can be in your thinking. It can be in your feelings, in your will. Sensual is your own desires. One thing that I see everyone in this Bible struggle with is lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Amen. It's throughout the entire Bible. Amen. Do you truly have control and dominion over your own lust? Come on. Not somebody else. I don't care if you lust after me, but am I going to be drawn to it because I'm lusting after you too? Amen. I have to be in control of my desires. Too many of us are ruled by what we want. It says when your own lust entices you and you're drawn away. It didn't say nothing about nobody else. That's right. Your own. That's something you've got to purge yourself from. That's something you've got to have dominion over. Not God. That's right. Come on. Everywhere, the Bible says everywhere there is good, evil is always present. And because of the nature that we have, before we give our life to Christ, we're more inclined to go with the evil. But we don't want to call it evil. We make what's wrong right and what's right wrong. Because that's the majority. We don't want to stand up against the majority as one. We really don't. It's easier to just go with the flow. Satan can even transform himself into an angel of life. That means he knows the word. He's going to give you the word back, but it's not going to be the way God said it. He's going to twist something. This is why it's so important to study everyone. Because some words, the way we use it, is not the way it's intended in the Bible. And if we teach it that way, we may teach in error. Now we're going to talk about the word battle. Battle versus war. Battles are generally smaller in regards to combatants and equipment. They use less resources and usually last for short durations. Battles have less casualties and are usually fought in one location. Wars are the exact opposite. So why is God only mentioning battles right now? Also, what is the battle about? This is not due to a war possibly not coming. I already told you that God said there's a, a, a natural war coming. <clears throat> This is about timing and strategy. If you have never read through the Old Testament, then you would not understand how strategic, and he's called the Lord of hosts, really is. A perfect example would be Gideon. Gideon had 32,000 soldiers to go with him to war. God broke it all the way down to 300. He was sending him up against the Midianites and Amalekites. Yes. because the children of Israel prior to this did not destroy them completely as they were supposed to. This is why it's important to know the voice of God in your life because what we're doing, do you know reluctance and hesitation will put you in full disobedience to God? If you don't do something in the time he tells you to do it. But one of our biggest issues is procrastination. Yes. I got time. You don't know that. Right. There's so many young people falling dead yeah. thinking they had more time. Yeah. Right. And if people get up here and cry, oh, you know, the Lord took him too early. You don't know what his spiritual life was, was like. You don't know where he was at with God. So yeah. we can't judge. We can only speculate. Right. Speculation, reluctance, hesitation, all three things that can put you in disobedience to God. Amen. We are not to speculate. Amen. If God don't show me something about you, I shouldn't be judging. Amen. If God tells me to cry aloud against your sin, then that's what I'm supposed to do. Amen. But we don't, we, we just, I think we ignore time sometimes. We want to do things when we want to. There were so many of them, the Midianites and the Malachites, in the valley, when they looked down, it couldn't even be numbered. Their camels couldn't even be numbered. And you're talking about 300 men defeated that many? But if you look back at the battle of Ai, there was many that couldn't defeat the small. Why is that? Simple. God was with one. God was not with the other. Amen. 
I hope this is making it clear to you what it's like to have God on your side yeah. and God not against you. Come on, sir. Yeah. As long as you're being obedient to God, you won't miss him. That's right. He will always be defended on his behalf. He will always give you honor. He will always exalt you. But disobedience just seems to run in our blood. It's what we do. Well, I know you said to do this, God, but I'll work on it tomorrow. Wow. That's for disobedience. It's not half obedience. That's right. After Egypt, all Israel did was complain and disobey God, regardless of the countless, very real and tangible miracles. Read Ecclesiastes. Somebody get Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 for me. sacrifice of food, for they consider not that they do evil. <clears throat> what this is, is saying is um, when we come into the house of God, most of us are listening with the attitude of, I'm still going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. Most of it, in us, we still have a heart of disobedience. When, when they're up singing, we're supposed to be emptying ourselves out before the word comes forth. <laughs> So that the word can fall on good ground. What this is saying is be mindful of your attitude, your mentality, and your spirit when you come into the house of God. This is a sanctuary. This is a holy place. How many times did God tell them to take off your shoes because this was holy ground? How many priests have went into the most holy place and fell dead because of sin? And we think that won't happen. It's happened in the New Testament. Amen. I don't want y'all thinking I'm just making something up, but Ananias and Sapphira, yeah. they lied. Mm -hmm. They didn't lie to me and they lied to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And they both felt dead That's in the right. temple. That's right. And we think God won't do that now? Come on. Over in Ecclesiastes 9, 11, this is so Solomon is speaking. And he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. And if you keep reading this, it's talking about wisdom. And it talks about how wisdom and having wisdom is much greater than weapons, physical weapons. Some of us, we still have a retaliation in us. We still want to take revenge. I'm going to get them one day. Yeah. That yeah. right there can be the, the cause of you not receiving the blessings of God. Come on. Right. Yeah. That yeah. might be why you feel stagnant in your walk with God. Come on. At the end of the day, God says, get wisdom first. Wisdom is the principal thing. Right. Without wisdom, nothing else works. Right. And then he says, out of all of your getting, uh -huh. as much wisdom as you get, Get an understanding of what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. If I just stood up here and just read scripture, what would it benefit you? If I don't have a relationship with God, I can't receive revelation of the scripture. Amen. Revelation and interpretation is not the same thing. That's right. I can interpret this Bible any way I want through intellect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can just read the Bible and gain your own understanding and go on with the rest of your life. But what do you really know? How much sustenance do you really have? Come on, sir. Why do you feel like you're not growing in God? Come on. We're supposed to go from faith to faith, glory That's to glory. That's right. Why are some of us staying on down here? Oh, God. Maybe you don't want more from God. Say that. But don't judge me because I want something better. That's right. Because I'm tired of waiting on my promise. Come on. Amen. Maybe I need to get myself in place and in position. That's Amen. right. God first is holding us as born-again believers more accountable on a personal level. Take a look at Achan and how his one sin cost all the people their lives and all that he had. Amen. We tend to think that our sin, as long as it is hidden, seemingly, 
only affects us, and sometimes we think it is not going to cost us anything. This is just one example of how one sin, which was disobedience at the end of the day, can affect a nation. But if you look at Adam and Eve, their sin affected the entire world. That's right. Just from a piece of fruit. Their desire, they wanted it so bad that it's costing us. God, it cost good. Christ. Christ was in royalty. I don't think we really picture this. Could you imagine an earthly king? He's wearing, you know, these long purple robes. He's got a crown of gold on his head with jewels in it. His royalty to come and live with the peasants. That's what Christ did. You know what, Father? Prepare me a body. I'll go die for them because they're not going to do it for each other. Right. But let me go give them an example. Let me take off my robe. He put on regular garments. Amen. He lived a simple life. He didn't let his desires control him. But he knew one day, Jeremy was going to need a savior. Amen. If 